Well, today on our podcast, Down to Earth, but Heavenly Minded, I have an article by Steve Holscheiser entitled, The Holy God. With that said, let's just read the article. <clears throat> what comes to mind when we think of the word holy, dictionaries have a great difficulty attempting to define it. Usually, it is associated with uh, divinity, but never really defined. Of course, the religious world makes great use of the word, but as with Many biblical words, they are but part of the jargon uh, and empty rituals. Mr. A.W. Tozer, in his book, The Knowledge of the Holy, makes the following comment in the chapter on the holiness of God. We know nothing like the divine holiness it stands apart, unique, unapproachable, incomprehensible, and unattainable. The natural man is blind to it. Holy is a way is God. Holy is the way of God is. To be holy, he does not conform to the standards. He is the standards. He is absolutely holy without an infinite, incomprehensible uh, fullness of purity that is incapable of being other than it is. Unger's Bible Dictionary offers the following assistance. Holiness is one of the essential attributes of the divine nature. It is on one hand entirely freedom from moral evil and upon another absolutely moral in perfection. Another has written the English word holy is from the Anglo-Saxon word for well or whole. Charles Ryrie asked, what does it mean to be healthy. It means more than being not being sick. Likewise, holiness is more than the absence of sin. It is a positive, healthy state of being right. This is what John meant when he said, God is light. And in John 1, 5, it says not only that God is light, it says, and in him there is no darkness at all. Scripture informs us in a regular and absolute holiness that only God is holy. And we see that in 1 Samuel uh, 2, 2. No one is holy like the Lord. There is no one other than you. There is no rock like our God. And in Revelation fifteen four we read, Who will not fear you, O Lord? and glorify your name, because you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship before you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. This is the truth of the persons of the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. The Father, we see this in, in 1711, I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I have come to you, Holy Father. Keep them safe in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one just as we are one. And then the Son in Acts 3.14, it says, But you reject the Holy and Righteous One, and ask that a man who is a murderer, be released to you. And then in relation to the Spirit in Matthew 1.18, now the birth of Jesus Christ happened this way. While the mother uh, Mary was engaged to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through 
the Holy Spirit. So we see all three are holy. In Hebrew and Greek, words used in Scripture <clears throat> would converse, excuse me, <clears throat> words would converse the idea of being separate from uh, impurity, sin, or moral imperfection. The word sanctify, which means set apart, comes from one of the Greek words uh, for holy. I got to pause for a minute here and clear my throat. The tabernacle is a vivid picture of this truth. When we think of this uh, sanctuary of the Holy of Holies, we get some small sense of God's holiness. For one to enter it in a wrong fashion meant instant death. On the annual day of atonement, the high priest must not enter with a within the veil without first making atonement for himself, lest he die. The prophet Isaiah provides us with what the natural response to the holiness of God should be uh, in Isaiah 6, 1 through 5. Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. We see that God himself is pure, sinless, undefiled, and as such is the standard. Since God never changes, the standard will always be perfection. For God to allow impurity in his presence would lower the standards, and as such, he would no longer be holy. Being holy, God is not only separated from sin, he abhorred sin and is incapable of sinning. He is opposed to sin as light is to darkness. Here we begin to fall into uh, an attempt to describe one who cannot sin. It is suggested that Adam was innocent, but not holy, as God is. Adam was without sin, but could and did sin. God is without sin and cannot sin. This, of course, is true of God's manifested in the flesh. In summary, when we think of the holy God, think of the absolute perfection standard, and as such, sin cannot be associated with him. Sin cannot come into the presence of God, for he is holy. It is his nature to abhor evil and delight in what is right. In the regards, Darby writes, holiness, on the other hand, in contrast to righteousness, is the abhorrence in the nature, in the na in the nature of what is evil, and delights in what is good and pure? Arthur Pink adds, because God is holy, accepted with Him on the grounds of created creature be doing is utterly impossible. The fallen creature could sooner create the world than produce that which would meet the approval of the infinite purity. The best that sinful men can bring forth is defiled. It is remarkable, then, and a tribute to the redemptive work of Christ that we read concerning those who have believed on him, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience 
and our bodies washed with pure water. That's right out of Hebrews 10, 19 and 22. Amazing that we can uh, come into the very presence of a holy God with boldness and full assurance. What a Savior we have, and what a work he has done.